Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. What would you say to having a game physics engine built into Blender? Because that's exactly what we are looking at today. Now, this is a 4.3 alpha branch. This does not mean it's 4.3 alpha. This is actually an experimental branch. That does not mean it's coming in 4.3. In fact, it's very much not coming in 4.3. Just means that it's based on 4.3. This could actually come in 4.4, 4.5, or 4 never. So just one of those things to be aware of, this is an experiment. So it may not work out. It may not make it into Blender itself. But you do need to use Blender 4.3 or later to work with it. Well, it's a custom branch, so you got to build it yourself. I'll show you where you can go ahead and get it. But first, a bit of a simple demonstration. I'll show you the source where I built this from uh, in just a minute. But you can see here, we have Susan. Susan is actually being generated by a geometry node that I sat, I, I attached to my sacrifice default cube. I sacrificed that off screen this time. What you're going to see here, very simple. So there are physics applied, gravity is going to kick in, and Susan is going to fall when we evaluate the geometry node simulation. That's it. There you go. Physics applied to an object inside of Blender. Now, obviously, that's not really exciting because, it, well, for one, there's no collisions, no nothing going on there. So let's actually change that up a bit. I've already created another network here. I'll show you how this all works in just a second. And all I'm going to do basically is take this static mesh and merge it into the geometry that we're testing. This is basically an invisible static plane right here at 0, 0, and 0 that this guy is going to go ahead and bounce off of. So let's go see that in effect now. So we run that and then boom, collision. So you can see this is how the physics engine is evaluating. You can obviously do much more impressive things than what I've done here, but you get an idea of what's going on. This is basically about the simplest hello world example as it gets. And honestly, it's not that simple, but I'll walk through how this works in just a second. You can do other things as well. So for example, we could apply some uh, angular velocity on this guy right over here. So you can see we've already got this vector feeding in. Let's give it some angular velocity around the Z axis. And with that applied, there you see spin and then boom, our collision happens. Bob's your uncle. So how does this all actually work? Well, again, it's all using geometry nodes, as you can see. And the heart of this all uh, is actually, let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better, uh, the, uh, the um, simulation nodes. So simulation goes here, to here and everything in between, every frame, there's an evaluation. And the star new node here is this physics time step. If you ever work with a, a physics engine, they're pretty straightforward in how they work. If you work with like in C++ or game engine or whatever, uh, generally what you do is you set up a simulation in your world. You say, these are all of the objects. These are the shells or the shapes of all of my objects. Apply a simulation to them. And then once it's finished simulating them, the collisions and all that stuff, then you move all of the objects in your world to go to those new locations. That's pretty much how it works. And that's pretty much how it works here actually. Uh, so everything is works off points though. So it does get a little bit confusing. So what we've done here is we've created an object. So you create whatever object type you want. In this case, we did an instance of Susan. Uh, we create a collision shape of that object using a convex hull, basically a, a shape around the mesh of our object. And then we've got uh, our point. This is our position in space. We just basically create a point eight units up in the Z axis. And we populate all of this into rigid bodies. Rigid bodies are actually like the, the, the doers, the, the thing or the, the um, data types inside of a physics simulation. So we've done that to create our Susan object here, and we do the same thing to create our uh, plane to hit. In that case, it's a static plane that we create as a collision shape, uh, and we set it up. That one is a static object. This is a kinematic, no, actually, it's, it's a dynamic rigid body. In this case, this is a static rigid body. A static rigid body basically doesn't move. It's an obstacle in the world, but other objects, such as our object over here, will interact with it. And then we've got another object here called physics world. As far as I can tell, all the physics world does is uh, gives you the ability to def define how gravity works. I think by default, it's negative 9.8 on the Z axis. If you want to create your own, you can set up a vector and pass that in. Oh, we got details over here. Yeah, neg negative 9.81 uh, as the default here. So that's all that this guy does. And what you do is you take all of the physics geometry that you set up. So these uh, various different rigid bodies and static bodies you've created as along with the physics world and you join them all together. They are then passed into the simulation. The simulation calls the physics time step, it updates, and then here's where things get a little clunky. So now that you've got all the new updates and the calculations and such, you need to actually draw it. So basically we are drawing our, um, so this is us drawing our object. Uh, so Susan is being drawn here again. So this is what actually draws the final mesh. But then we have to do is take all of the calculations that the physics engine did and update that object in the scene. So really all that this is doing is moving a bunch of objects, but it doesn't actually move the object that you render. So what we do is instead we're rendering a version of Susan in the world over here, and then we are putting its location available this way. So we're calculating the position and the rotation here 
and then we combine those together and then we set that as the transform of our newly drawn object so again a physics engine just calculates positions you need to do the updating of the locations yourself uh, in your um, in your geometry node network, which is what we we're doing right here. And then we spit that out to the end of our output. Again, this is probably the simplest hello world you're going to see. Uh, and that isn't simple in the slightest. <laughs> so uh, this again is an experimental process and I'm actually just scratching the surface of what it's capable of. So here is where you can find details about it. This is again, an experimental version of it. It's implementing rigid body physics using geometry nodes inside of Blender. Uh, you can see again, some much cooler tests of it uh, in action right here. So he's created like a brick wall that a cannonball. So again, a much more defined example scene than what I've done, also a much more complex one. So you can see uh, geometry nodes to create that brick wall. Uh, then we're gonna create this physics object here for this cannonball. All of these shapes have uh, the, the rigid bodies applied to them, and then it's doing the calculations for you. So there you see uh, a much more uh, complex example in action. Uh, and then also if you scroll on down here, uh, you'll find someone did a hello world picture. Uh, this is the basis of what I just did the demonstration on. So if you wanna learn how to set up your own network, basically start here. But the, the simple process is uh, get your objects, define their shapes, combine them together, pass them into the physics engine, get the results out, draw your objects on the screen and then update it. That's kind of the essential aspect of what you're doing. Now, interestingly enough, there's another guy here that's contributing. Uh, scroll on down here, this guy here, and he's written some patches for uh, instance on points to clean it up. So it makes it so much cleaner for creating objects. Unfortunately, this hasn't been branched in or hasn't been uh, merged into the code. I don't know if it's ultimately going to be, uh, but this does make the, the node network quite a bit cleaner with his patch. He's done a couple of other updates as well. So it'll be interesting to see if those get broken into here. And you can see one of the other examples of what you can use it for and then physics kicks in. Each of these rigid bodies calculates down. Uh, so yeah, that is, and here you can see again, the same guy created more or less the same network and then boom, you can see the end results of it. There is the node network that he used to do it. Unfortunately, he uses his pull request in order to do it. So unless you wanna build things by yourself, you're not gonna have this code over here, which is a shame. I hope his stuff gets actually merged in because uh, it's a lot cleaner. You, you lose all of this, um, this part right over here this uh, recreating of your object, this part over here gets really streamlined down. So then you really only need to worry about this part over here. It does make the, the node networks quite a bit cleaner. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in checking this guy out, uh, it is linked at the top of this. I will link this in the linked article down below. We go over here to his particular projects. You will find it's available here. A bit of a breakdown of what is there. Uh, do also be aware that there is um, definitely some instability here. Sometimes the sim physics simulation just stops working. The one things that you want to know about, but you'll find if you scroll on down here, uh, there's automatic builds of it that you can go ahead and download. And those downloads are available for uh, various different platforms, uh, which is kind of nice. Now, again, make sure you get one that is actually working. Uh, but yeah, that is the, uh, the project. Again, you don't have to build it yourself, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then also, if you're interested in learning more about it, uh, check out this video by Cartesian Carmel. Uh, he actually spends a lot more time with it, doing a, a lot more complicated things. He also runs into a lot more frustrations than uh, I do in my video. But the difference is, I don't wanna spend uh, an hour doing this. So this is a 55 minute video. I tried to break it down to literally the, the simplest hello worldish example so that you can build from there. But it is a neat concept. Basically, it is the bullet physics engine integrated inside of Blender. I think he even mentioned um, looking at possibly doing the Jolt physics engine as well. I'd love to see this. It's kind of the genesis of something that could be really cool. But again, a warning, this is an experimental branch. So there's no guarantee that this will ever become anything. But what's here now is ultimately very, very cool. And it's something I would like to see happen. But let me know what you think of physics in Blender. And I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.